What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest build of Evolution X ROM based on Android 12 L of course and this is the June 11, 2022 build so this just released while I'm shooting this video and yes I have already flashed it so let me show you the about section quickly we have the Evolution X logo up top the Android version shows as Android 12 but this is Android 12 L but still the doodle actually shows as Android 12 but that's fine the Evolution X version shows as 6.5 Omega for Raphael and this is an official build again. The security patch is latest of June 5th, 2022. So that's the most interesting thing about this. And we have the Soviet star kernel over here as the stock kernel. The build date again is 11th June and the maintainer is of course Johuab or Stalix and the build number and the Linux status you can see from right here. Talking about the system settings, this is how it looks like still. We do have the system updater too. The updater still looks kind of similar. You can check for updates from here. And of course you can use this updater if you are encrypted. And if you're asking me, how do I update? Of course, I dirty flash it. You can check out a guide. If you want to do a clean flash, you can find that guide in the description box too. In the gesture settings, we have the quick tap or the back tap actions. And from here, you can take a screenshot or access some stuff, show notification, etc. If I do that, and right now, if I do the back tap, okay, so I have to go home or something. So right now, as you can see, it shows the notification panel as soon as I do the back tap. So yes, the back tap is working perfectly fine. This is a really interesting feature. We have the quickly open camera option and we have the system nav gestures. In the settings, this is how it looks like. Like the advanced gesture options, like long swipe action and stuff, you can actually customize these things however you want to let me go back we have the back gesture animation and the haptics we have the space bar under the keyboard you can set it to narrow hidden or the default one then we have the gesture indicator also the swipe to invoke assistant is working fine no issues also there is the amount of screen height to be used for the back gesture and the pill length and the pill radius customization is there so right now i have changed those and i have made it to fullest that's why you can see the pill bar is quite thick and large so yes, you can customize all these. Also, there are the two button and three button navigations as well if you want to use them. One handed mode and right now it's working perfectly fine if you're noticing. If you scroll down, we have the press and hold power button actions. You can customize that too. We have the swipe click screenshot and there is the share, edit, delete and the Google Lens option for all these. They work perfectly fine. Also, we have the playback control, the double tap and the prevent ringing option. Let me go back. We have the front camera settings and in here we have the front camera sound effect changing option. But let me tell you there is no front camera motor calibration over here and again this is how the settings panel looks like but let me show you the home screen. I am using a separate or third party launcher over here which is the launcher launcher. This is the actually 12.1 alpha 3 and you can download it from the description too. And there are huge amount of settings for this launcher. I am using this like third party launcher but by default you will get the pixel launcher over here. There you don't get the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen and stuff but here you do get all those. So that's why I'm using this launcher and let me show you the left side or the lawn feed I have installed it separately but that sometimes doesn't work. So later after a reboot and stuff it did work and right now as you can see the Google's like discover page is working fine even with this launcher launcher. So yes the lawn feed is actually working fine but you have to do a couple of reboots I guess. So after that, as you can see, it's working perfectly fine here. But other than that, it's working perfectly fine. The swiping up is actually getting you to the app drawer and you can search for any particular app and swiping down gets you to the notification panel. And this is how the page setting panel looks like. Let me tell you that I'm kind of disappointed over here with the latest Evolution X-ROM that in these builds, even in the light theme, the quick setting panel stays dark. This is how it is. And of course, there is the double tap to sleep. Now, after I do the double tap to sleep, let me tell you, if I double tap over here, as you can see, it wakes up. But it may not work for you sometimes because it was not working for me earlier. So if you face this bug, once you have this always on display disabled, if you double tap, it, if it does not wake up your screen, let me tell you, you have to do one thing. Just go into the settings, then go into the display settings, then scroll down more. The double tap to wake, you can just simply disable this one and reboot your device once. And after that, you can just re-enable it. It should work properly from then. So that's what I did. And right now, the double tap to wake is actually working perfectly fine for me, even when I have the always on display disabled. Right now, let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed and just notice how fast it unlocks. 
and here let me show you one more time because the screen of FOD is also working and here if I enable the always on display right now if I just double tap again this is how the always on display looks like by the way I can double tap to wake 2 on the always on display that works perfectly fine or flawlessly and here again talking about the fingerprint scanner speed it's blazing fast no issues whatsoever with the fingerprint scanner speed that I have had. So from security settings you have this face unlock and fingerprint just tap here then from here you can just set up the face unlock and you just hit next and as you can see the front camera is working perfectly fine for the face unlock and right now we are all set it shows and in the settings we have two options like when swiping on the lock screen and stuff so I will use it with that one and right now if I try to unlock with the face unlock I just have to double tap on the always on display then swipe up and wait for the time being and as you can see it unlocks flawlessly I would say the face unlock is working perfectly fine no issues whatsoever. Also in the security settings if you go into this advanced settings then we get the stock lock options and only there you will have this app lock and let me show you the app lock first we have the protected apps option and in here I have locked particular apps but let me lock some more like the google photos options and stuff are there and let me show you the app lock right now this is how the app lock ui will look and the settings which is opening in the background this is kind of a bug that it shows in the background but yeah it's not special for evolution x or something it's appearing in all a12 l roms as far as i know but yes this is how the app lock ui looks like you just tap the fingerprint scanner and as you can see it unlocks or like unlocks wherever you left it so yeah that works perfectly fine the app lock is working super fine no issues whatsoever that i have faced now let's talk about a very important point about the camera of this rom and here let me actually show you you get a very basic old very old kind of google camera i did not even open it here as you can see this is how the ui looks i don't like it at all so that's why i haven't used it at all but i have installed the ENX camera over here and it's working flawlessly and here if you are noticing the 2x telephoto zooming option is there and then we also have the ultra wide angle lens working perfectly fine here and if you are noticing in the pro mode you can shoot pro video and you can manually control the ISO, the focus, the shutter speed etc with 4k 60fps and that is just insane. If you want to enable this camera on this particular ROM, it does not come with this camera, of course. The ANX camera is not pre-included over here, you have to install it separately. But if you want to do that, I'll definitely recommend a guide for that in the description or the cards, you can just check it out. But yes, this is working flawlessly and that's just amazing. And even in the portrait mode, as you can see, the selfies and stuff should be working perfectly fine. That is something I can say definitely that you are gonna enjoy this ANX camera experience over here and you will not get this kind of experience in any other ROM mostly because ANX camera in like a lot of ROMs does not work properly but here it's working almost 100% that I can say. So we are done talking about the camera right now let's talk about the quick selling panel shall we. This is how it looks like and I have added a lot of toggles you can edit and add from here and you can edit and add multiple toggles and even when I'm tapping on these like I'm swiping on this, I get a haptic feedback everywhere and the haptic feedback is just on point right now and you can see there is that live display so the outdoor brightness mode is working perfectly fine. This makes the display really really bright and we have the sound toggle too if you tap and hold on it this is how it looks like also from the volume panel. As you can see the animations they look properly dope I would say and yes once you have connected to a bluetooth headset it shows that bluetooth battery icon right there and it works perfectly fine also in the status bar it shows I mean on the quick setting panel it shows the battery percentage of the bluetooth that's working fine also the icons you might be noticing I'm using the Akira's one that's why these looks like this but by default it won't look like this of course and here let me show you more toggles like the reboot toggle is there you can directly reboot to the recovery by just tapping and holding on it the fps info also appears perfectly fine right there you can see and we have the moto or dolby audio over here and we have all these presets and you can even edit them out if you want to use music movie game etc presets or you can also go with custom ones equalizer and stuff over here no issues whatsoever with this it works 100% and it works perfectly fine the sound quality right now is amazing via bluetooth via the headphone jack and the speakers as well no issues with the sound quality on this rom and we have the google home controls the extra dim feature and there is also that anti flicker or the dimming that is working fine there is that android 12 kind of screen recorder over here we have the device audio and the microphone audio recording at the same time and we have the battery saver the data saver do not stop heads up always on display toggling option you can also enable always on display for charging as well 
the airplane mode is there of course then the night light the dark theme and the flashlight etc by the way in the dark theme everything becomes pitch black because i have that black theme enabled and if you're noticing in the dark theme the whole settings panel becomes dark and it looks beautiful i would say so yes the amulet display you can definitely use with the dark theme right now let's jump into the settings panel and inside the evolver i'll show you the customizations because it's been a long time that i have showed you guys the evolution x customization so this might be boring for some but might be interesting for some so definitely skip this part if you are someone who does not want to see the customizations first of all we get themes we have the black theme right there that's the pitch black option and that works fine in the monet theme engine we have the white luminance the chroma factor and the custom color options then we have the dark theme and you can of course schedule it if you want to then if you scroll down more we have the headline and body fonts and plethora of options for the headline and body fonts we have the google sans then the lemon milk and stuff then other options like the one plus slate etc and just notice how much fonts are there the icon packs you can of course see from right here i have been using it with the akeras one works perfectly fine we have the signal icon styles you can also change that to stroke zigzag etc let me go back we have the wi-fi icon styles too you can also change that and we have the icon shapes and even plethora of icon shapes are present over here let me go back we have the status bar settings inside status bar items we have this headset bluetooth etc icons and we have the clock style you can change the position right left or center and we have the traffic indicators you can enable it but i use a separate app for this this internet speed meter the paid version and in the clock and date we have the am pm style the date format etc enabling option you can definitely do those the battery icon styles right here you can have the battery percentage next to the icon also we get the icon landscape or portrait from right here you can definitely change it to big dotted circle as well right now as you can see it's changed to big dotted circle so all these things are present then we have the battery bar option you can have the battery bar location on status bar top of nav bar etc if you are gonna use the battery bar of course and we have the vaulty icons and yes you can of course change the vaulty icons view wi-fi icons but i don't have a sim card on the device right now that's why you cannot really see a vaulty icon so yeah but vaulty is working perfectly fine here if you insert a vaulty sim and we have the bluetooth battery status enabling or disabling options and the combined signal icons mic and privacy camera options then the location privacy indicator is also there then we have the notification settings and from here you can enable reticker and the ambient edge lighting and the heads up customizations are also there then the notification count options are there too and we have the notification header and the sound if active then we have the battery light you can also enable it for do not disturb that's the front camera's led over here then the blink flashlight for incoming call option is there you should know about it because it's a mui feature then the in-call vibration options are there let me go back we have the quick settings there we get the date the secure quick setting tiles and the artwork media background the brightness slider and we have the quick setting footer and stuff then the edit tile options then the clear all buttons are there you can even change this button style like right? right now it shows like this and you can of course change that to however you want to let me actually show you right now as you can see this is how it looks like so yeah you can definitely customize it thoroughly however you like it that's just amazing and we have the power menu customization there we have the disable power menu on lock screen also the advanced reboot appears and let me actually show you the power menu this is how it looks like we have the advanced reboot so you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here then inside gestures this is how it looks like we have the system gesture settings again which is present in the system too then there is a brightness control so you can control the brightness just by sliding a finger on the status bar and yes right now as you can see it's working fine then we have the other things like the toggle flashlight when the screen is off with the power button then the double tap to lock screen on the lock screen and the status bar and we have the double tap to wake on doors let me go back we have the lock screen customization the udf pace customizations are there and here we get plethora of icons right now just notice how many fingerprint scanner icons are present right now so yes huge amount of fingerprint scanner icons you will get also the animations you can actually customize so that's just awesome we get all these animations and stuff let me go back we have the double line clock the always on display scheduling option then the media cover art and the blur level etc and we have the fingerprint vibration also the ripple effect is there the buttons customization the on-screen nav bar and then we have that system navigation again then we have the show volume panel on the left side the per app volume control etc then in the misc settings we have the gaming space and you can of course customize it however you want to you have the block full screen events and stuff while you are playing a game or something disable swipe to take screenshot etc all these features are there then hidden apps options are there then the launch music app on headset connection then we have the screen of animation you can also change it to crt or scale if you want to 
Then if you scroll down more, we have the unlimited Google Photo Storage and it does work. And the unlock higher FPS in games option is there. Then the unlock higher quality streams. Then the pulse option is there for the navigation and equalizer and stuff. Then we have the show temperature warning option. So if the device gets hot, it will show a temperature warning and we have the allow application downgrade for something. And we also have this ignore window secure flags. I'm not really sure what this does. We have the show CPU info, then the toast app icon. And in the USB configuration, you can of course choose file transfer. This is a very convenient feature for me. I use it on a daily basis. And that's it. That's all the customizations which are present over here in the latest Evolution X ROM. And right now, let's talk about the battery settings. This is how it looks like and it is still amazing, I feel. Because we have the battery percentage on top and we have the adaptive preference, the idle manager, the battery charge warning, etc. These are all cool and all, but these are the things that you won't find in any other ROM. The battery temperature, the design battery capacity, the current battery capacity and the charging cycle as well. And you can just notice how much charging cycle I have. I have done about 724 charging cycles on this battery and the battery temperature is right now 36 degrees which is fine. The fast charging is also working fine over here, you shouldn't worry about that. But here let me talk about the battery life. I have tested that with the Aku battery app and with that I have been getting about 7 hours of plus clean on time I would say. That is really really good battery life I feel. Of course on a battery which is 700 plus charging cycles old. And in the health section we have this battery health it is showing at about 71 percent which is decent i would say after again 700 plus charging cycles talking about the charging speed it was fine with the 33 watt charger it's been charging with about 4000 ma so yeah no issues with the fast charging also the battery life should be decent over here let me go back we have the sound and vibration and this is how it looks like we have all these media call ring etc volumes and again this is how the volume panel looks like we can expand it and we can put the phone into mute or silent from right here then if you scroll down more, we have the do not disturb, the phone ringtone, etc. Then if you scroll down more again, we have the ringtone vibration pattern changing option. Then we have the Dolby Atmos settings again over here. Then if you scroll down more, we also get the touch vibration, the per app volume control, the screenshot sound, etc. Also, we have the Mi Audio Dirac right here. You can of course choose the presets of the headphones type, whichever wired headphone you use. And we have the choose preset option too, there we get the bass booster and stuff and all these like newer presets are there like the bass reduction, treble reduction, soft bass and treble. Let me go back, we have the enable hi-fi audio option too, you can use those if you want to. Then we have the haptic feedback customization. This is really interesting that it is actually working perfectly fine. You can of course change the intensity of the haptic feedback through the whole UI with the settings. Then we also get a clear speaker option if your speaker sounds muffled or something. You can definitely use this toggle to clear your speakers out. In the display settings, we have the brightness level, the adaptive brightness and the lock screen customizations and stuff are there. If you scroll down more over here, we have the ambient music ticker and stuff. Let me go back. We have the pocket detection and we have the dark theme and the nightlight and stuff. And even here we have the anti flicker or the disturbing mode. Then the color calibration is there. We can control the RGB of the screen. Also the hue, saturation, intensity and contrast. You can change from right here. Let me go back. We have the double add to wake. And then we also have that prevent accidental wake up option and the wake up on plug right here. Then we have the wallpaper and styles. And this is how it looks like. I have been using a wallpaper app over here. And in the basic colors, we have these colors. And these are the wallpaper colors that you can choose from. And we have the dark theme and the themed icons. The app grid, of course, you can change it up to 5x5. Five five. But I have been using a separate launcher over here, so that's working fine. Talking about the app opening up speeds and stuff, they are working perfectly fine. Like this device just feels really, really fast, even when compared to the latest 2022 devices, I would say. But yes, of course, the 60 hertz display is a letdown, but the colors are a much, much better experience over here on this like K20 Pro, I would say. So yeah, overall, as you can see, all the app stays in memory and stuff. No issues whatsoever with the app winning. And here, if you want to do a split screen, this is how you can do it. And of course, split screen should be working perfectly fine. You can just do this and you can scroll as you can see. So yeah, split screen is working perfectly fine. And here, I mean split top actually. And both of the apps stay together just like this. So yes, Android 12 features are working perfectly fine here. No issues whatsoever. Also talking about the performance benchmarks here are the Android and Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build. So let me tell you about the basic things like the safety net and stuff and yes, after flashing Magisk, I have done like the fixes and stuff. After that, the safety net is passing perfectly fine. But if you're not using Magisk, if you're just running the ROM out of the box, the safety net should be working fine there too. Also, the DRM Info stays as L1 over here, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in TNTP without any problems. 
So let me know in the comments what do you guys think about this latest build of Evolution X ROM. I feel this is one of the best custom ROM that you can flash on your Redmi K20 Pro based on Android 12 L where you get even the ANX camera working of course if you flash it separately. So give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe to the channel if you have not yet, share this video with your friends. If you feel like this is Tito from KDNDX signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.